Well, howdy folks and uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, we have got to get out of the shop. I am tired of just working on stuff. So, we're going to take us a little trip and we're going to go to a mine, uh, the ruins of an old mine that I, I honestly... I have been living up here for 30 something years and uh, this is the first time I'd heard about this one. It's in an area that I don't go to very often. So um, we're going to go ahead, sorry I was getting my mirror adjusted. So we're going to go ahead and um, head on into, uh, into town, stop and get some ice for the ice chest and uh, grab a couple of sodas. We've got the ice chest pretty well packed with water right now. Uh, so we're gonna get some sodas and, um, and then head on out there. So we have let somebody know where we're going and I actually sent him the track uh, or the planned route uh, on Onyx, which is something you can do. You can plan a route and you can share it with people. So you can send it to somebody and then they'll know if you don't come back you know the general area where you're going to be uh where you're going to be at so and the nice thing about it is that if you decide to deviate from that you can modify that and send an update to somebody um and so uh like i said i'm not sponsored by onyx hint hint onyx if you're listening uh, I would love to get a sponsorship, but um, at any rate, I'm not sponsored by them. But uh, so at any rate, uh, yeah, this should be a, a good time. It's we're starting out a little late in the afternoon, but um, you know, uh, this this mine is not very far from the house, really. So um, we're going to go and check it out, and I'm also going to show you guys. Um, how I uh, how I top off my fuel tank because we got to top off with fuel. How I top off the fuel tank consistently uh, so that I can get a better reading on my mileage, and uh, we'll show you all of that. So sit back and relax and uh, enjoy the ride. Maverick. So we've got to pull over here to the <clears throat> the pumps that has the ethanol free fuel. Uh, I use the ethanol free fuel in private parts here because it won't um, it's available number one here and number two it won't go ahead and degrade um, you know like the the fuel with the ethanol in it it won't if it's if the Jeep sits for a long time it's not going to tear up the uh, you know all the carburetor gaskets and seals fuel hoses you know all the rest of that kind of stuff so Let's go ahead and get the stuff out to uh, show you how I check the fuel here. Okay, the first thing I dig out is my log book. Um, I've got a log book in here, and I keep track of my mileage in this log book here. I use a uh, DA form, I think this is what, a 1970. Um, you can, if you just search DA form 1970 and try to search for the you know how to fill it out basically this is how I fill it out I put the starting mileage here um, the starting date of the log here 
and then in the first line here it's extended dispatch and then where I get my fuel at uh, the Julian date uh, the mileage and the amount of fuel that I put in so we'll we'll get that out and of course we have to have a rightness stick for doing that so we're we're here in Yarrington Nevada today is third of August and the mileage is three zero nine eighty eight okay and we've got this little piece of metal here that I bent and we're gonna take that and we're gonna set that down right there in the filler spout we'll get the pump turned on And then we grab the ethanol free fuel and this thing is going to make a bunch of racket here so and what we're going to do is when it when it starts getting close to the um to that uh to the end of that little piece of metal We'll kind of slow the flow down to, um, you know, so it's not bubbling up on it. I don't know if you can, guys can see down in there that well, but we've slowed the, fl the flow rate down as much as we can. And we still got a little bit more to get it in there so that it's almost there, about a quarter of an inch more. And there we go. I think that's about as close as we need to get it. Okay, and that took 8.1 gallons, so we're going to write 8.1 gallons down here. And we don't have a whole bunch of people waiting to get into the pumps just right now, so we can quickly figure out what our mileage was at the last tank. Now, the last tank of fuel I um, was mostly highway miles. I was actually, I had to run over to Smith Valley which is about 20 miles away and so I put well, I probably put 40 or 50 miles on this tank but let's find out how much we had don't forget to take this thing out when you're done the cap will not will not close And sometimes I put it in this little in this little deal right here. So what did we have? We had seven hundred and twenty one miles divided by eight point one ga gallons. That was about fourteen point nine miles to the gallon. That's actually pretty good. I do not expect to get anywhere close to that kind of mileage on this trip because we're going to be off-road quite a bit. Uh, I mean, we, we probably have about 15 miles, but uh, to get to the turnoff. But uh, we're going to be climbing a considerable amount. We're, we're at about 4,500 feet here. So, but we're going to be climbing quite a bit. We're going to be going to, eventually we're going to be going to, to the top of about a 9,000 uh, foot peak. So we're going to be climbing about 4,500 feet and the majority of that 
is going to be probably in the last 10 miles of the trip. So we're going to be pulling pretty hard going up the hill. So at any rate, we're going to go inside and uh, get some ice and sodas, and we'll get on the road. All right, well, we've got our uh, ice and sodas, and uh, had to stop and talk to somebody. Every time I drive this Jeep into town, every time I drive old private parts into town, I always end up getting somebody who wants to talk to me about it. It's usually one or two people. You got people that just, well, one of three, really. You got people that uh, really don't know what it is and are interested to know what it is. Um, you've got people that know exactly what it is. And uh, I've had several people that, oh yeah, I used to drive those. That's a 151, isn't it? Boy, I haven't seen one of those since I was in. And then you have the ones that say, yeah, Grandpa drove one just like this during World War II. And it's kind of like, ah, uh, no, no, unfortunately he really didn't. But uh, it's fun talking to people and uh, about the 151s and explaining a little bit about them because uh, a lot of people have no clue whatsoever that the M151 series of vehicles was the immediate predecessor to the Humvee and when I tell them they went from this you know little vehicle here to a Humvee they're just astounded We're gonna head south of town here on the pavement, and I'm not gonna bore you with all the pavement running. So uh, we'll see you guys back when I get on the dirt. All right, folks. Well, we are on the nice gravel road here, and uh, we're gonna be on this gravel road for a little while. We are gonna slow way down front of this ranch here just because it's the polite thing to do when you're out wheeling and you come up to somebody's house be polite slow down
That's another thing you've got to really watch out for on these roads. Is especially when you've got ranches in the area, is oncoming traffic. Um, you notice how that guy was half over on my side of the road. He was going slow enough he was able to correct, and, uh, and I had spotted him early enough that I was able to slow down and correct. But uh, with these ranches out here, some of these ranches, like out there off to the right, oh, lovely. Yeah, we got lightning happening today, too. So, at any rate, with these hay ranches out here that are growing alfalfa hay, um, you know, they got to get them, get the hay out of here one way or the other, and they don't take it a bale at a time. <coughs> so it is not unusual to see semi-trucks running up and down these roads. So our turnoff off of this road should be coming up here fairly soon. They have had some water on this road recently. Follow, probably following this power line road most of the way up. Generally, we'll go ahead and keep both of these power line roads uh, maintained well enough. They're not going to be—they're not going to be blading them every, you know, <clears throat> few months or anything. But they're going to keep them bladed well enough, um, you know, and they'll repair them if they get washed out really bad. Uh, because the majority of these roads, like this power line road, is going to go straight up the mountain is right in front of us uh, to power the um, uh, the radio repeaters and things like that. Uh, this is something that that I learned a long, long time ago. If you're lost and you come across a set of power lines, uh, take a look at them first and um, if they are, if they look to be maintained, you know, sem somewhat maintained, or if the power lines, you know, are not in disrepair, um, get on that power line road. Because that power line road is generally going to take you closer to civilization. Now, it may take you a long ass time to get there, so it really pays. <laughs> to have a good idea where you are at. And that's where the GPS app on your phone, Onyx, there's another one that I use called Gaia um, that's also a really good one. 
Um, and so, you know, it will go ahead and, uh, you know, you can go ahead and take the road that you're on. Uh, and if you if you downloaded some offline maps, um, you know, because if you if you don't have cell service, uh, the GPS function still works on your phone, um, or at least it does on mine. Uh, but um, you know, uh, as a perfect example, I'm going to stop here. Kind of, I'm going squirrel on you guys here for a second. This big. Uh, set of power lines here if I decided I'm done with this today I'm going to go you know I can get on this power line road and I can follow this power line road and this power line road will take me it's probably close to 20 miles I'll bet but it will take me all the way to um, highway 95 alternate um, which is a paved highway That'll take me right back into here. Well, it looks like somebody got a little artistic with those uh, those two tanks. Those are uh, probably set up for water tanks at one point in time. I do not know if that was uh, in relation to the mining operation up here. I suspect it's probably. Um, probably has more to do with the uh, with the ranching as you can see there's some cows out here actually yeah those are cows no those are horses I did not think that the wild horses we're ranging this far south. I've never, I've never seen, uh, you know, haven't really seen an awful lot of them down here. It very well could be that what they've done is that they're trying to push them down into this area here. 
because further up north, up in uh, Central Line County, up near Dayton and, and places like that, they really have become a nuisance. And um, people have been hurt, and I think there was at least one person that, that was killed uh, by running into a wild horse at night on a you know 60 mile an hour highway. So we're just going to let them get on by us. Uh, they are pretty skittish, so they're not used to uh, folks being around. If these were some of the horses that were up in the central part of the county, they would have just sat, stood there looking stupid. Um, and, you know, that's just the way that they are. But these ones here are... Uh, are getting away, getting away from me, so it's a good thing. And they are protected by the state too, so you can't mess with them. Now, I don't know if you guys can see it through the camera here. I guess I'll try to zoom it in on the editing. But at the top of that hill that's straight ahead of us is some radio towers. We're going to try to get all the way up to that today. Okay. Well, I don't know how well you guys can see me now, but uh, I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to, well, we're definitely not going to try putting this thing on the, on that magnetic mount anymore. Because I think I just freaking destroyed this thing. Well, unfortunately, we, I think we ran over the, the Insta 360, so uh, at least we can use the, the lens on the other side. Spot right here that may cause me trouble. Yeah, or maybe not. There we go.
All right, folks. Well, we made it up that trail. That uh, that trail turned into uh, a wee bit more of a rocky situation than I had anticipated. But uh, you know, that kind of it's kind of what happens up here. Oh, well, any rate, um, judging by the construction of the ore chute here. I am going to guess, and the fact that it has a conveyor belt on it, I am going to guess that um, that this mine was probably in operation uh, probably early 1900s, maybe even, I'm guessing by the conveyor belt, it may have been uh, operated probably into the 50s. Yeah, you can see the ore chute there, and they had grizzly bars on it right there, and it looks like another set of grizzly bars that were that were here. Just you know, get get the big rocks out, let the smaller stuff down, and uh, and out to the conveyor belt there. It looks like we've got. Probably a shaft up over here. I've never been to this place, so this is all new to me. Well, if there was a tunnel there, then uh, there ain't a tunnel there no more. This also may have been... Uh, yeah, this had to have been operated with... This had to have been operated with heavy equipment because this here looks like it may have been uh, it may have been a, either a tailings pile or an ore pile, but uh, it looks like they went in with uh, with a loader and we're moving the stuff from there to there. Well, let's take a wander around and let's see what else we can see here. So we're going to have a really pretty sunset because it looks like that thunderstorm is going to be moved past. So we're going to get some a uh, little bit more daylight on the way home. So we've got a tank here which probably was full of water. And here is another tank, just like the ones that we saw on the way in. So my guess would be uh, that those tanks that are down there were probably meant to come up here, and they just never did. Yeah, this, I'll bet you this was a water tank. A lot of times you can take a look at the trash around the mine site and you can get an idea as to, you know, what eras it was worked in. Um, you know, like that right there, that's a chunk of aluminum. Uh, 1800s, they sure as heck wouldn't have had aluminum. Now, I am not going to try to drive down this. Although, eh, I think old private parts could make it down there and back. But uh, as long as we're halfway walking down here, if we can do this without falling on my face, that would be way cool. I am glad I did not wear my cowboy boots today. This is something to, to think about on the uh, stuff that I told you on the last video. When you go out, you know, dress for the occasion. 
Uh, I had a feeling I was going to be climbing up and down the hills. So, those are what I'm wearing. All right. Well, now this is kind of interesting because we've got a look, at, looks like a one, two, three, four, five stamp mill. And so this kind of stamp mill was indicative of early 1900s um, and in the 1800s. But uh, you know, look at some of the concrete work here. That's not 1800s. And uh, uh, the other good thing to look at is the construction. You can see that was electric, electrically welded. Uh, you can see that weld bead right there. So that was electrically welded. So they had electricity up here, or they had, uh, well, I am pretty confident they had electricity up here, probably a big generator of some sort. You can see over here on this side, you've got some aluminum sheeting which um, most likely came from, you know, scavenged from something else. It looks like it may have been siding to a camper, possibly a trailer. Um, don't really know. But, uh, you know, the wall is kind of collapsed up against the side of the stamp mill here. But it's really cool to see that the uh, scrappers haven't gotten up here and gotten to it. Yeah, the, and you, you can look on the date. So the date on the... Whoa! I can do this without killing myself. So you can see the date on the stamp mill. The Angels Ironworks in Stockton, California, 1906. And uh, you can see that's that's pretty tall up there. Um, you've got the flywheel there. Now, just because we've got a conveyor on there that looks like it was, you know, much later, you know, doesn't mean that this wasn't worked, you know, uh, it doesn't mean that this stamp mill wasn't worked for a long time, or it very, very well could have uh been um transported up here that ah! it very well could have been transported up here um you know from a different mine site uh there that was not an uncommon thing and we got Okay, and I'm not sure what that, uh, that looks like that might have been a dishwasher there. Unfortunately, just because we see stuff from, you know, like kitchen appliances and things like that, does not mean that somebody didn't come, it up, come up here and dump it. Chances are pretty good probably not but yeah that, that sure as heck is a dishwasher right there so I mean this mine could have been worked even up into the 60s Unfortunately, I was not able to find a whole lot of information. I, granted, I didn't do a whole lot of digging, but I didn't find a whole lot of information on this mine online. Okay, so you can see, and we'll go ahead and zoom in, on that gearbox up there, that's a looks like a gear reduction box. 
And I'm not going to even think about climbing up on that stupid thing. There's no way. But what I'll do is I'll get up, back up to the top level, and uh, shoot some video down at that thing from a little bit closer. But it, it's cool to see a, uh, a fairly intact uh, stamp mill. So the ore would be dumped in up there. It would come down that chute there, which was probably the original chute or chute on this thing when they uh, when they first built this mine. And it would come down there, and then it would come down into the stamp mill, and those uh, that flywheel would be spinning. It would be raising those hammers up and down and just making a god awful racket. I can imagine. They probably could have heard it from the ranches all the way down there, just a hammering away day and night. And so I'll bet that originally, I'll bet that originally that's what it was, and it was probably, uh, they probably didn't have any equipment up here, you know, uh, modern, you know, like loaders or things like that to go ahead and move the ore back in those days when the mine was first opened. We have a, how many of you guys, are, how many of you guys can remember when you've seen a pull tab like that? Let's see what this actually is. This looks like it's a root beer can. It's funny, um, when I come up to these mine sites, you know, the Hollywood has made it out that, you know, the miners were all just drinking whiskey and alcohol, at, you know, copious amounts, 24 hours a day, and they weren't. Um, anytime I find a beer can at one of these sites, it's usually something more, much more modern. You know, people coming up here having a couple of beers while they're checking the mine out. But the miners, you know, if they're drunk, they ain't gonna last as miners very long. A boss, if they're not producing, if they're not producing, the boss is gonna fire them pretty quick. One of the things that I haven't seen yet there's some old water pipes. Is I have not seen any ore cart track. Now that is entirely likely that when they quit mining here, they took the track and the ore carts with them. It's a hell of a lot easier to move a tr you know a bunch of uh, t uh, track, you know rails and ore carts than it is to uh <clears throat> than it is to move a stamp mill i think this road here continues on up and it hooks up to a road that goes around up the top there and so i think when we head out of here i think that's the way we're going to go we're going to go up and then turn around and come down the road that is up at the top of the site here. Uh, okay. And when I was in my 20s, I could just run up this crap. Of course, back in those days, I was about 20 pounds lighter and in a whole lot better shape. But uh, you can see there, that's a tunnel. Uh, it's, you know, it's all caved in there. And then probably another one right up here. Okay, you can see the rocks right up there. I'll bet you that's a tunnel entrance too. Because back in the old days, the miners, they just followed the ore. 
if the ore went up, they went up. If the ore went down, they went down. Let's see if we can get up here and see if we got a tunnel opening. Okay, this definitely was a tunnel here, tunnel opening. It has been caved in. So. Whew. I really need to get back into shape for doing this kind of stuff. This is fun and I love doing it, but damn, I'm out of shape. But if you got to work, and mining was hard, hard work, that's a heck of a view from the job site. And we, we still got, you can still see the rain coming down, so we're probably going to get through into some rain on the way down. But uh, let's get on back down to... Let's get on back down to old private parts and uh, and go on up to see if we can make it to the top of the mountain. Okay, there is that gearbox looking. De oh, that is a pre-crusher. That's what that is. That's a little jaw crusher. And so what it does is it dumps down onto the that conveyor belt. So it takes some of the rocks, you know, that are this size and bigger little bit bigger but not but small enough to fit through the grizzly bars and uh it'll go ahead and crush those up with that uh little pre-crusher there and then it drops the more fine bits that get uh basically pounded into powder down there at the um at the uh the stamp mill So at any rate, uh, that's actually pretty cool. So that, that addition that was put on, the metal addition that was put on, you know, somewhere probably mid, uh, you know, mid uh, 1900s, uh, you know, was upgraded with, with that equipment there. Uh, I, it would be really cool to get down there and get some pictures of it, but my fat ass is not going to step on any of that wooden structure down there. And I'd be real interested to see what was in that that little shed looking thing, but uh, ain't no way. Nope. When I was in my 20s, I probably would do it, but uh, not now. No way. There is somebody that knows that I'm up here, and uh, but I'm going to take, be real cautious so I do not fall because that help I've fallen and can't get back up it's not going to do me any good here nobody's going to hear me so at any rate um, like I said let's get back to going This ain't so bad.
Okay, well, looks like we get to turn around and go back. But what we do have is a collapsed tunnel entrance right there. See right up in there, it goes down in. So uh, looks like the rest of the road goes up that way. So looks like we get to turn around and go back down. So I'm gonna set the camera up and let you guys watch me Austin Powers this thing around up here. Alright folks, um, it's starting to get a little bit too dark to be filming. Um, the sun has gone down, so we got to get down off of this mountain. Plus the fact, you look, you look over there, i got to drive through all of that. So, uh, and I just got off the phone with my brother, and uh, he said that it just absolutely unloaded on them at the house. So at any rate, uh, I'm going to need to pay attention to, uh, to driving and what I'm doing. It's starting to get dark. Um, the camera's not showing it near as well as, um, you know, near as dark as it is. And so uh, I need to get off of this mountain safely. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again.